Okay, I wanted to do a video today on how long do gas masks really last, because this is one of those things where people argue about this constantly online, and I think the worst offenders of this are certain preppers' blogs and, like, preppers' YouTube channels, and I have nothing against preppers, of course, but it's where, obviously, they want to keep making videos or writing articles, so they delve into stuff they've not got a massive, um, you know, a lot of knowledge on, but then proclaim it to be facts. Now, there's an interesting kind of fallacy or effect, and it's called the Dunning-Kruger effect. And what that is, is basically where the dumber somebody is, the more they think they know. And that's kind of an oversimplification of it. It's more like knowledge on a certain subject. And the Dunning-Kruger effect is a bit odd, because it sort of says, let's say you've got somebody on the very far left of your graph that's got absolutely no knowledge in something. And then on the far side you've got somebody who's a total expert. What you'll find is somebody who has absolutely no knowledge on the subject won't claim to have any expertise in it. But what actually happens is somebody who has the slightest bit of knowledge in it, let's say 5% of available knowledge or less, they're suddenly at the top thinking they know everything about a subject. And then as the graph goes up to people who are more knowledgeable, their actual you know, confidence and their own ability goes down until you get to the experts where it goes back up. And that's basically the problem that people who are knowledgeable on the subject don't want to sound full of themselves and, you know, try and spout out information on it. But people who don't actually know much about that subject but have read the slightest maybe Wikipedia article on it, read a paragraph on this subject, suddenly think, oh, I know everything about it. So this is one of the things I think that really plagues some of the prepping um, sort of gas mask and respirator information is that people who don't really have any experience with masks but have read a little bit about them think they now have the authority to write an informative blog article or something and then they give lots of misinformation out. So what authority do I have to counter that in this video? Well I've got like 70 odd gas masks in my collection, respirators. I find respirators absolutely fascinating so I've done a fair bit of research into them. Again, that doesn't mean that I am a CBRN trained specialist, but I think I have enough information to be able to spot when they say things that are totally false. Now, getting on to the subject of the video before I get too sidetracked, the point of this video is sort of all about how long do the masks actually last compared to what you read online. Now, the problem is, as I've said before in lots of other videos, you only seem to get two fields of thought. You get the field of thought that only masks that are within like five years old or something are useful. Any other mask is immediately garbage, it won't work, everything fails on the mask. And then you get the other school of thought where it's basically masks never expire, nothing can ever go wrong with them, masks and filters last forever. And that field of thought is also equally as wrong. The problem with masks is they basically have a factory guarantee, and that can be anywhere between about 5 and 20 years, depending on how much confidence the company has in their masks. Most of the Israeli masks, from what I've read, are guaranteed for at least 10 to 20 years. Avon guarantees most of their masks for 20 years because they sort of obviously make good quality masks and they know their masks are going to stand up to, you know, about two decades of use. So. You have the companies that put these sort of guarantees on their mask, and it's no different than if you buy a product from a shop and it says it's got a one year, two year free guarantee, it's that kind of thing. But obviously, as you'll know, lots of products do last longer than that. Some products products won't even make it to the guarantee period, but that's alright, you can at least get a replacement or whatever. And then some products tend to go wrong like a day after the guarantee. And I think some people seem to equate like cheap electrical goods with a respirator and assume they work in exactly the same way when they really don't. So what I wanted to do in this video is kind of explain the logic of how a respirator can go wrong. Again, I will have talked about this in other videos, but I don't think I've done a video specifically on this where I go into as much detail. So we're going to look at, you know, how old respirators can be before they fail, what might go wrong on them and all that sort of thing. So let's start off with our first respirator. Okay, so what I have here is my British Light Anti-Gas Respirator Mark 1, also known as the Mark 6 gas mask. And this respirator is dated 1944, it's from January 1944. So this mask is very, very old, but guess what? It still actually works. Um, this is the oldest mask in my collection I've actually tested and I can guarantee that it works. I've got some other older ones that probably would work as well. But, um, you know, I've got no inclination of testing them because they have asbestos filters on. Now, a respirator itself is very simple. Basically, the job of a respirator, at least a full-face air purifying respirator, is to protect your eyes, protect your, um, obviously, face, and to protect your lungs and, you know, insides from inhaling or ingesting chemicals. 
So how that mask works is obviously the glass, plastic, whatever eyepieces protect your eyes when the mask is on. And when you have a filter on it, and the filter is a really important thing we're going to have to keep coming back to because this is what a lot of preppers and things don't seem to take into consideration. The filter being the most important part of a mask because if there's no filter nothing else will work. But with a mask there's lots of other features, with, you know, some masks have, some masks don't and they still work fine. So you'd have your filter on there and what your filter does, this isn't a 60mm filter the mask takes but I can use it as an example. See, so the filter cleans the air that goes through it. So any sort of nasties get trapped in the filter. I've done entire videos on filters, so I'm not going to get really in-depth onto filters in this video. But regardless, all the nasties get stuck inside the filter. The purified air goes through and goes into the mask. And as you can see here, there's a valve here. And where the exhale valve is, where the air comes out the mask, there is a valve there. That's really all there is to a respirator. It's simply basically a piece of rubber that you normally have on your face that you can see out of and you have a filter that cleans the air coming in and the bag or the mask or whatever itself the job of it is to simply you know have valves that work so other air can't get in it has to go through the circuit of going through a filter so masks themselves are very simple there's very little that can actually go wrong on them now as you add more features onto a mask of course there's more that could go wrong if you have a voice diaphragm often voice diaphragms become the weakest part of the mask if they rip, tear, whatever your mask is compromised. So there's this kind of stupid logic I see a lot in the prepping stuff where they're saying that if you have a mask that is beyond a certain amount of years old the mask is totally useless and won't work. For example I've tested this mask it still works. Would I want to trust my life on a mask like this? No. I have much better masks in my collection that would work better than this mask in terms of being more comfortable to wear. You know take more modern filters and everything else but regardless old masks if they've been kept in good conditions can still work. So, a big factor you need to think about with masks is actually the quality of the mask itself. If it's a really well made mask, then not much is going to go wrong with it. If it's kept in good conditions, you know, there's only like an intake and an outtake valve that can actually fail being the weakest parts of the mask, then your chances of those failing are pretty low. Now with these masks, the actual intake valves and everything are cut from fairly thick rubber. You can see one of the valves there. The other valve is that yellow one, sort of pale yellow white one on the inside. So those valves are fairly strong. So as long as this mask was kept out of direct sunlight, maybe in a bag where it wasn't crushed into the bag, you know, the mask didn't have to be folded down because masks that are folded for too long get damaged. Nothing's really going to go wrong with it. Now, I'm sure you know from obviously lots of the news sort of coverage on stuff like this is the there's lots of waste in landfills that takes like hundreds or thousands of years to break down which is a big problem like with lots of plastics and rubbers because we make so much of it so much gets thrown away and then it you know just pollutes the earth because it takes so long to break down masks are basically mostly made from those materials so they're not gonna you know just suddenly break when there's not a time bomb in the mask where it says oh I'm out of my guarantee bang so those guarantees are in place simply because militaries and people who need a mask for their job cannot risk having a mask that's going to fail on them. So the idea is that they have masks for very short time periods and then they you know, have new stock constantly coming in. And lots of that is also very much military industrial complex kind of stuff and you know just keeping people in work. If you're a mask manufacturer you don't want people to put in a big order of masks you know, once and then that's it. Um, you want them to keep putting in repeat orders when their stuff is coming to the end of its guarantee. Now, different mask manufacturers, as I was saying, definitely give you different amounts of sort of estimates on how long masks last. For example, as I was saying, Avon guarantees most of their masks for about 20 years, where some, some company like 3M only guarantees them for five years, but I have 3M masks, one of my 3M masks is from the 1990s. I use it when I actually encounter dust, it's just a half face respirator. Actually, I've got it here. This particular mask, the filters are newer, but the mask itself is much, much older. I have a feeling it was from the 1990s because I bought it as new old stock um, because it ended up being like a quarter of the price to buy a new old stock mask than it was to buy a brand new one. And the mask is still in perfect condition, works perfectly, and it's got new filters on, so, you know, nothing really that can go wrong. So, as I was saying, the thing is with these masks is that it's mostly down to how well they're kept and 
the quality of the manufactured goods. But as I was saying, 3M only guarantees their masks for 5 years, Aeon guarantees theirs for 20. So if you were going to buy a surplus mask and they were two about the same price, you'd probably go for the Avon one. But regardless, masks don't just fail overnight, which is an important concept to understand. Masks themselves, as I was saying, very little can go wrong on them. So what you actually need to start thinking about more is your filters. Here's an Israeli civilian mask, technically the Shalon 4A1, a very popular mask on the surplus market. Often you can get these for like 20 to 30 pounds or dollars each. Now, as I say, these are very, very good masks. Israel makes them for their civilian population, and Israel does have a very real fear of chemical weapons or biological weapons or whatever else being used against them. So the masks actually have to work. These aren't, you know, like one of those, I oh, will make them just in case something happens. No, there's a very real fear with Israel that, you know, there would actually be chemical weapons used against them. So the masks have to work. Now, these masks, as I said, can often be found very cheaply on the surplus market, but you'll find numerous websites that say these are absolute junk, won't work. Firstly, why would Israel issue absolute junk to their own people? Obviously, they want them to live if they're going to bother you know, manufacturing masks and spending a fair bit of money to do it. Uh, so why would they manufacture junk that's going to fail really quickly? And, you know, what authority do these places have to say that these are junk? Now you have kind of two things here, as I was saying, you have the sort of, I guess, prepper bloggers who don't know any better that just regurgitate this information, but lots of this information you'll find where they say that certain masks will go wrong very quickly is actually from sites trying to sell you newer masks. And there's always this kind of problem, you know, um, of conflict of interest, I'd say, when you come to look at lots of respirator information because generally people who are trying to sell you something, and I have to mention this over and over again when it comes to GP5 filters and other asbestos filters, people who are trying to sell you something probably, you know, are not gonna give you the entire truth about a product, or might have a bit of a bias when it comes to trying to make a sale. So if you're somebody who only stocks very new respirators and doesn't keep surplus, you know, doesn't sell surplus stuff on the side, you are probably going to say that you know, masks that aren't the ones you sell won't work. Which, you know, is a load of BS, but lots of sellers do it. So, as I said, Israeli civilian masks are very good, but the important thing we have to, you know, take note of is the filter. Now, obviously, filters, are, as I was saying, are the very important part of a respirator, and you do need in-date filters, in my opinion. Now, as I said again, this is another fallacy, the kind of problems that come in with filters, is that Filters are guaranteed, again, like masks, for a certain lifespan. And basically what most manufacturers say is the filter life is indefinite. Indefinite is not the same as infinite. What indefinite means is if the filter is still plugged up, after it expires, you know, technically expires by the date on the filter that says it expires, or 10 years after manufacturing date when sealed, whatever, however they do it, it's, it's like a best before date on food, basically. So it's... What they're saying is the filter may work after this period, but we cannot guarantee it. And they are definitely true when they say that, because filters have activated charcoal in. They have a particulate filter, but the particulate filter doesn't ever really expire unless you damage it. Um, and that charcoal filter inside is impregnated with various other chemicals to make it work more efficiently. Now, activated carbon definitely does expire. Uh, even if you look at people who make activated carbon products for pharmaceutical kind of stuff, basically say, yes, our activated charcoal has an indefinite shelf life. We have to put an expiration date on it by law, but it will eventually go off and we have no idea exactly when. So, activated charcoal inside the filters definitely does go off. Now, an interesting example I've got of this is when I got my Chinese TF1 respirator, it came with this Chinese filter that's filled with activated charcoal. You can actually see the charcoal inside if the camera will focus on it there. Now, interestingly, I assume the expiration date for this filter is 2017-10 that's on there. Hopefully you can see that somewhere. But the interesting thing is that despite this filter only being expired by a few months by the time I'm making this video, um, it absolutely does not work at all. It is totally expired. Um, whereas I've got filters like this that are about 10 years old that still work when I test them against chemicals. So, not all filters are made equal, and it's important to understand. It also depends on the quality of like the caps and things that you plug the filter with. Filters exposed to actual like room air are gonna run out far faster than filters that are still sealed, you know, with factory seals. 
if it's airtight, nothing's getting in, which means the filter's going to last a lot longer, but again, not forever. Whereas this filter came with no plugs on it at all, and it's already expired, so... That says a lot about just leaving a filter unplugged, in my opinion. But, as said, there's no guaranteed life. Once the filter's expired, there's no guarantee of how long it's going to last. So you really have to bear that in mind. Now, one of the really stupid bits of logic I see on a lot of these prepping blogs is where they basically say, if you buy um, a surplus gas mask, it will come with an expired filter, therefore the mask is useless. Oh, it's only useless if you don't replace the filter. Now, using that logic, couldn't you buy a brand new gas mask and it just not come with a filter at all? Because obviously, there's a big market for be being able to buy filters for masks. These masks are designed to be reusable. They're not designed that you go, oh, my filter's expired, time to chuck this in the bin and buy a whole new mask. But weirdly, a lot of people seem to have this logic. You only really have to throw a mask away if it's been exposed to horrible chemical agents, been damaged, or you can't really decontaminate it. Um, you know, once if you have your mask sitting somewhere ready for an emergency and a load of filters, you don't have to chuck the mask away as soon as you've not got filters for it. It's just, this is bizarro logic, I don't really understand it, but basically, a lot of people don't seem to understand the concept that you might be able to buy a surplus mask in good condition that has an expired filter and then just buy a replacement filter for it. It's a very, very odd piece of logic, but that's what a lot of these bloggers use, is they say, now oh, if you buy an old surplus mask, it comes with an expired filter, therefore the mask is useless. The mask's only useless until you re buy a replacement filter. If you buy your brand new, let's say, respirator that costs you $300, and it comes with one filter, and then, you know, within a year of you owning it, that filter's dates run out, would you then just chuck away that mask and say, oh, it's useless now because my filter's run out? No, you just buy new filters for it. You know, it's like if you bought a Brita jug and you said, well, I can't get this on oh, new old stock of a Brita jug, I have to buy a brand new Brita jug because otherwise the filters of the Brita jug are expired. You could just buy new filters for a Brita jug. It's... But regardless, my point here is that, yes, the mask is only as good as the filter, to be certain, but you can buy filters separately from the masks, that's not really an issue, but for some reason it gets brought up a lot in these people trying to convince you, you know, that these masks are useless because they'll simply just say if the mask comes with an expired filter therefore the mask is useless no as long as you can replace the filter the mask is fine as long as the mask works now i think a lot of this comes down to like the sunk cost fallacy and what the sunk cost fallacy is basically let's say i buy something and it costs me a lot of money i am then probably because of how irrational humans are going to defend that product non-stop even if it's you know, useless. Now, I'm certainly not saying these um, expensive new masks are useless, they are probably very good, but the issue is that, let's say you could buy a mask that will give you the equal amount of protection for $30 and one that will cost $300. One costs you 10 times as much as the other one. If you buy that $300 mask and then found out you could have spent $30 for something that will give you the exact same physical level of protection, um, you're probably going to start making irrational defences of the more expensive product. And that's sort of what the sunk cost fallacy is. So you're going to start saying, well, you know, the protection level is just so much better and the old mask can't work because XXX reason, you know. And that's basically the sunk cost fallacy, that you're making irrational arguments for something that cost more and you're saying it's better simply on the ground it cost more. So using that logic, if I... For some reason, there was a place that just wanted to get rid of a load of stock and new respirators, they're not even surplus ones, and they charge less. Would you then say that mask now would become useless because it doesn't cost very much? It's, you know, as I said, it's a sort of fallacious or biased way of thinking that's not a good way of actually thinking about these things. So, as I said, you've got some places where they say old masks don't work because they're trying to sell you brand new masks and they want to make a big, you know, load of money off of those masks. Uh, so it's in their interest to say, don't buy that cheaper product that will work, only our product will work. It'd be basically like if you um, everybody thought you had to buy a stretch limo or some sort of luxury car because a regular hatchback couldn't get you from A to B. Um, it's that kind of logic. You know, rather than selling the better product on what makes it better, has it got a better voice diaphragm, does it have drinking tubes on it, you know, all that sort of stuff. Um, they try and actually rubbish the other person's product rather than actually explain the positives of their product, or they do both. But um, that's kind of logic, and I'm saying a big problem as well is people never seem to take the filters into as much account as they should. 
As, said, as I said, you know, filters are really the most important part of a mask. If you've got a brand new, really great mask, but you've not got a good filter to put on it, the mask's useless. Whereas, you, as long as you've got a good filter and you've got a working, you know, really old mask that will at least take the filter, that's going to protect you. So, that's where all these problems come in. So, how long do masks really last? They last as long as their weakest component is going to last, and if they're kept in good conditions, that will be indefinitely. With some masks, I think it would be a hundred years. I have a feeling this mask, as long as I keep it in good condition, would outlive me in terms of the rubber seals and everything still functioning. I'm sure one of my organs would have horribly failed by the, you know, well before that mask is going to fail. That's just simple logic. Because very simple parts um, that are made well aren't going to fail very easily. There's not much that can go wrong with a mask, that's the interesting thing. Especially not older surplus masks. Because old masks that don't have voice diaphragms on as well, you know, they just have a couple of rubber valves for the intake and outtake. There's not much you can do wrong with them as long as you keep them in good conditions. So, hopefully that's answered the question. But yeah, and if you are a prepper, please do your research into respirators before actually making lots of these claims. Because some people might waste a load of money by, you know, believing what you say. Or you might get people killed if you don't uh, stress the importance enough of filters but you do stress wasting all your money on a really good, high-quality new mask, but then not getting any spare filters for it. As I've said quite a few times, the best logic really is to buy a surplus mask you know is in good condition and you're comfortable with using that fits you properly. Then use most of your other budget to buy filters. Make sure you keep most of your filters sealed, um, you know, in date that you have somewhere where they're convenient to get to so you can use them and then maybe have one or two old filters that even if they're expired work as a training filter so you know how to swap out filters and stuff like that for masks but as said here is a mask from 70 odd years ago um, and it still works absolutely fine so that's the kind of you know logic here you can have something as old as this that might still protect you as long as you've got filters for it and I think that does go a long way to explain that you know, it's a very bad argument to make that just because the mask is old, it's guaranteed to be junk. 